And the problem with that is um, the drift. Um, I mean, technically by law, uh, whatever you spray on your land needs to stay on your land and in you know but we found that these guys in the end are you know they're very um, very thoughtful farmers you know they're not going to waste chemical if the winds blowing too hard because it's not going to go where you want it to go however you know if you take that chance and the winds too too strong and our vines are are not in the dormant stage but in the growing stage well then things are going to um, that's that drift can kill our plants and then there is economic loss and then that ka-ching ka-ching lawsuit whatever and you know, can imagine these old time weed guys did not want people from Portland, outsiders coming in and telling them um, when they could spray and maybe even what they could spray. And you know, it was pretty tense. And I'm not sure. Well, I'm not sure that it's. Well, I do know it's less tense, but we're still not liked out there, and because we're not out there. We don't live there. We still live in Portland. And the reason we live in Portland is for the day job. Scott needs to keep the day job to keep this dream alive. I mean, that's it. And I, mean, I don't know how he does it, Scott, between his full-time job and then going out to the farm to work. And um, you know, on top of that, he's full-time dad. I mean, it's a crazy amount of work, and um, but we're doing it. Anyway, these farmers, so we got them together and, you know, a lot of, you know, grumbling, grumbling, grumbling. But in the end, you know, knock on wood, we haven't had a problem. So in 2006, spring of 2006, we planted our vineyard. We got talked to all the farmers. We got everything lined up. We had the plants ordered. We put in the end posts. Everything was all ready to go, and we planted our vineyard. Things were moving along, you know. Um, yeah, the weeding sucked out there. I, we spent um, the year weeding. We had a terrible, terrible weed problem inherited from the ground, and we got terrible, terrible advice from the gentleman we bought the land from. It was a, it was a really tough time. Um, not to mention the big freeze that came in at the end of uh, at the end of the growing season, and our our vines were ready. Um, we were anticipating a frost, you know, on the last moon of October I think it was and what happened was there was a severe freeze and um, we were certain that our vineyard um, had was dead was gone and um, thankfully it wasn't but there we were still working through some of that um, that freeze damage you know young vines and um, if it happened the second year the vines would have been you know much hardier but well first year and welcome to farming So 2007, we're moving along, moving along, and Scott and I had been doing the um, uh, dog and pony show, going around looking for investors and, you know, going to these angel investor forums, and we had a huge business plan, and oh, we'd hear the same old blah, 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 oh, you're not a tech company, you know, how, you, you know we just want to make money and sell you fast. We weren't very lucky finding investors, but we did find one, and... Um, we were very, very excited. He was very, very excited. At first, he was just going to put in, you know, you know, hundred thousand or something. Then, after you know, some time and getting to know us and coming out, you know, he was going to put up the whole kit and caboodle. And whoo, weren't we excited? I mean, we were just thrilled beyond all measure. And that same year, um, something else happened. We called the, this guy the big fish, and he's a big fish in the wine industry, and he wanted, he was considering buying the property next to us, and we were like, oh my gosh, an investor and a big fish who would bring, you know, um, um, bring some focus to us out here in the middle of wheat ground so that we wouldn't be the only ones, and uh, well, long story short, our investor fell through because he just wanted too much. Um, he wanted full rights to everything before even giving us all the money that he said he'd invest in us. And then the big fish, well, the big fish during that whole deal kind of started the, the great rift with us and the, um, the farmer we bought the land from. In the end, it turned out just fine, but there was a big hullabaloo because, you know, the true colors really came out um, on the uh, farmer's side. Long story short, again, uh, when we tried to go close our land deal with him because he had been carrying the note, suddenly uh, he wanted to increase the price. Um, 
it just wasn't very friendly. We were just shocked and it took months, it took months for this to close for us. The big thing is that we got out from under that and we um, actually kissed the ground when we uh, settled that, uh, it wasn't a lawsuit, but you know, we had signed papers that that land now um, was in our name and it was no longer carried by him and um, we were moving along. Now we're up to 2008 and we're going to have our first harvest and um, we did not find any investors so the dream of the winery on the hilltop was not there and we thought about selling our grapes but um, we realized hell we've put too much into it we've we've put so we've risked so much to do this um, and Samuel was born that year so Scott said you know I, I at least want to make some uh, wine to commemorate Samuel's birth year and after um, talking to a gentleman where we would make our wine um, about making a few barrels Scott realized we were just going to go all the way and so that's what we've done we've um, we made wine in 2008 that is now um, ready uh, 2010 the wine that we make is based fully on Scott's vision um, and um, thankfully we found a gentleman who helped us just make a sound wine and let Scott have the artistic um, input and it's worked out really well. So despite all the risks that have we've gone through, you know, this unproven ground, I mean, it's still unproven. People have to taste our wine. Weather is also something you have to contend with. You, you, as much as you can prepare and think you know, you don't. Chemical drift from the farmers, well, so far that hasn't been an issue. The economy, what's the economy going to do with us? You know, I don't know. Um, we're going to find out. A fire, a range fire, swept across the ground and uh, kind of stopped in our vineyard. And, well, wasn't that some news, like the day before Samuel's birthday party, that um, there's a fire and um, there was damage, but... Um, Thankfully, it, it wasn't as bad as it could have been. The big thing is that's really helped us that we've had a clear vision um, from day one. Scott has had a clear vision. Um, we've done our homework. Scott's done the homework. And um, we're just pushing through. So it's really been quite a struggle. And especially, I think the hardest, I don't know if it's been harder for me or Scott, and probably harder for Scott because of me, because this isn't my dream. My dream is to write children's stories and one day to illustrate them as well. There you go. And so what am I doing now? I'm doing this. And that's fine because I'm learning, I'm growing, and I'm helping our family. And um, it has really been quite a, um, quite a journey and quite a ride. This year, 2010, will be our third harvest. Samuel's going to be two in July. And we've got wine from all of our hard work. And... Hey, that's what we've been doing.